Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make this cool graphics that look like a fiery ball. I've made a series on introduction to creative coding. So if you're interested in learning more about the basics of programming, be sure to check that out. So first, let's try to understand how to use the arc function. So the arc function takes a total of six arguments. The first four are the same thing as how you would draw an ellipse. So the first two are the X and Y location of the center of the ellipse. The third and the fourth are the width and the height. But then the fifth and the sixth are actually the point at which you want to start drawing the arc and then you want to stop drawing the arc. And the values that you're going to provide are going to be the values of the angle. I'm going to start by setting the angle mode to degrees. So when you provide a value of an angle within P5.js, you can do it in either radians or degrees. I'm not going to touch on the difference between the two right now, but because I choose to do in degrees, I can just set the angle mode to be degrees by writing this line. So let's start with using the function arc. Let's do arc that goes between width divided by two and height divided by two. So I want this circle or this arc to be smacked in the middle of my canvas. And then I want the size to be 250. And then I want the arc to go from zero to let's do 180. Please notice that how we draw the arc is in the clockwise direction, right? So it goes from zero here to 180 here. So if you were to do to 270, then it goes all the way up top. And what you see here is that it also fills the arc, right? So if you don't want that, you can just write no fill here, and then it would just draw the line. Now, instead of actually providing the x and y location as width divided by two and height divided by two i want to translate i want to use the translate function to translate the origin from the top left corner here to the middle here so i can just do translate and then provide the point the new point of origin and then now within the arc function i can just write zero zero you should get the exact same result I don't want a constant angle from zero to 270 here. What I want is that I want that change in angle as the draw function is called. So if I want it to start from zero and I want it to end at whatever the point is, right? I can create another variable and I'm gonna call this variable position. And I'm gonna give the position to start at zero. So it's gonna start at the same point as the starting point here. And then I'm gonna give it another value called velocity. And this velocity is gonna be at one. And then within the draw function, I'm gonna write position is equal to position plus velocity. Meaning that every time the draw function is called, this position is gonna be changed by one. Let's try it. And there you go. What we want to do next is that we actually want it to stop at 180. So I need to write a conditional statement. A conditional statement that says, if position is more than or equals to 180, then reverse the velocity from one to negative one. So I just multiply vel by negative one. So let's try it. So from zero to 180, and then it should go back. Okay, but once it hits zero, now, this is not what we want. Once it hits zero, I want it to reverse the velocity again. So I'm going to add this piece here, or position is less than or equal to zero. Ooh. Ah, it's because we start the position at zero. So I'm going to start at one. It goes back. It bounced back. Okay, now we want to draw an additional arc. And this arc is going to go from negative 180, right? So we want it to have one more that goes like this. Let's try it. Okay. 
Looks pretty cool already. Now, we don't only just want these two arcs, right? We want multiple arcs. First, let's define more variables. One is count, and how many do we want? Let's start with five. And then right now, we have a constant diameter of 250. But because we're going to have multiple of these arcs, I'm going to create a variable called spacing. So it's going to space out each of the arcs, right? Let's do spacing equals to 15. And so now we just need to change 250 here to let's do i plus 1 because i equals to 0, right? We want to start at 1, i plus 1 times spacing. Oh, and we need to put everything in the for loop. If i less than count, i plus plus, then we put all these arc thing in here. And then we want the i plus 1 times spacing to be the diameter, right? For both of the arcs. Okay. Okay. And then you can you can change the size here based on your liking. This looks pretty cool too, but it's not the same as what we wanted originally. If you notice here, the because we use the same pause and val variables here, the speed at which each of the arcs go from left to right or from bottom to top here is the same and that's not what we want. We want it to go at a different speed. So instead of doing just a variable here, I'm actually going to comment this out and create two arrays. So let pause is equals to an array, an empty array first, and then within the setup function, then this is where we will define, we will initialize the value. So we want the position, the starting position to all be at one, but the velocity I want it to change at a different speed. And let's do i plus one times a scale, let's do 0 0.5. And instead of just having this if statement here, we also need another for loop. If pause of i, right, is more than or equals to 180, so it's going to be the exact same thing, but now we're looping through the two arrays. Val of i is going to be changed. It's going to change direction. Okay, and then after that, you want this to be equal to this plus bell of i, then we can delete this piece here. Okay, let's try it with here. Ooh, what did I do wrong? Arc was expecting number for the sixth parameter. Ah, okay, so this, we need i here, we need i here. Whoa, okay, let's reduce the size to count to 5 and then spacing to 15. Okay, so it's quite similar to what we want, but you can see this like flashing circle that happens every so often, right? And I think this is because when it goes into this conditional statement here, I think there are some values that is either like it's a decimal number or something like that, but um, it's not between 0 and 180. And what I figured out to fix this is that we can constrain the position value to be exactly from 0 to 180, and it prevents it from doing this flashing circle. So within the arc here, you just do position equals to constrain position of i equals to constrain and you want to constrain what you want to constrain position between 0 and 180 and with this you don't see that flashing circles anymore 
And now the last piece is that you want to make it more colorful, like a fiery ball. And what I did here is basically I give it a stroke color. First value R is 200, but the second value I give it at 120, but I change it based on which arc it is at. So I did I divided by count. And then the third value, I just set it to zero. And then I also give the stroke weight to be four. And I change the background color to be at 20, so almost black. And you can also change the count to be more so that it's more exciting. And let me show you the last piece that adds a little bit of oomph into this, which is what if we make it move? Let's set a new variable called angle and then let angle be initialized at zero. And within the arc function here, you want to add angle to the start and the finishing variables here for both. So angle, angle. Then if you run, nothing happens because angle is at zero. Then at the very bottom, what you can do is that you can change the angle value by slightly. Let's try this. And then now your ball moves slightly to the right you can change this to whatever variables that you want based on how fast you want your ball to move. And now you see how easy it is to make something this dynamic, starting from something very simple, like drawing an arc. Give it a try and see if you can make it more interesting, change different colors, change the size, or even change the shapes. See what you can come up with.